Hello everyone and thank you for joining me in this new movie special. Okay, so this movie is a movie that people has already requested on my channel. It's uh, Forbidden Planet. Uh, all I know about this movie is that it was uh, made in 1956. And I've also heard that this is like one of those sci-fi movies that you have to watch no matter what. So since this is a classic TV channel, classic movie channel and a sci-fi channel, so this is obviously a must watch. Uh, so also thank you everyone who suggested this movie uh today i have robin here with me the thing is that i cannot move the camera this time so you're probably wondering why am i doing this again in my living room and not in my office and the reason is kind of stupid but it's my reason anyway <laughs> it's my reasoning um I like watching movies on my television. Like I don't write, I I really don't like watching them on my computer or on my laptop or you know I, I I need the big screen and this is the biggest screen I have. I love watching it on the comfort of my sofa with Robin here with a snack, you know, like in the living room. Okay, so uh, that this is why I'm watching the movies in the living room. Like is my day off, or one would I call it? But probably all the rest of the episodes. And this channel will be back in the outfit. Before I continue, remember that you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. You can also like, share and subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to support my channel and see all the other exclusive content, you can become a Patreon or a YouTube member. I will leave all the links in the description box below. Today's snack, I only got coffee, but this is a peanut butter jelly sandwich because I have nothing else. Okay, I haven't done the groceries yet. So I believe that there's going to be a lot of noise outside from uh, my neighborhood. This is still in the daylight and there's a lot of noise because I live right next to a very busy avenue. So I got a lot of noise. I'm wearing a microphone though, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to mask the sound outside. So I hope it is. I have no idea what I'm going to find actually. So I'll, I'll just have to see. As you guys know, I see no spoilers, nor trailers, anything about the episodes until I've watched them. So, yeah, you know how this is. Okay, so let's get this done. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's an intro. Leslie Nielsen? I had no idea he was in this movie. I love Leslie Nielsen. Roby the Robot. I love how this is no music, but these are only special sound effects. Just like my intro is no music, it's just sci-fi-ish sound effects and the dog barking, but this is pretty much the same. It's pretty cool though. Oh, the special effects were courtesy of Walt Disney Productions. Electronic tonalities. So it's like the music, electron. Is all the music going to be electronic tonalities? I didn't see any music uh, credit here. Wow. By 2200 AD, they had reached the other planets of our solar system, okay. through which the speed of light was first attained and later greatly surpassed. Oh. Oh, I like this. I like the lens that they use here. So everything is focused here right. and I like this. Take it away. Oh, well, so that's Leslie Nielsen. Look at him. He was handsome. All right, good. Okay. Want to bounce through this one? You want to bounce through this one? No, I don't think they do. So they are traveling faster than the speed of light and now they are going to deaccelerate. like a teletransporter like th there's someone beaming them or something oh my god the colors oh I love these colors I'm sorry but I love those combinations of crazy colors wow oh man it looks awesome oh the deacceleration of course <laughs> the little lifts I love them we're down to point three eight nine six of light speed Oh, they went really, really slow now. 
like a sun? Jerry. What? Did they go straight to a star or what? There's Altair right on the nose, Skipper. Oh, that's the planet, right? <laughs> oh man, look at that! Oh, that's awesome! Man, the visuals! Meanwhile, this ship arranges its own eclipses. Yeah. Twenty years ago, the spacecraft Bellerophon landed here. So our mission is to search for survivors. Okay. So they're gonna try to find survivors from 20 years back. Wow. Man, the visuals are just rad. I love them. I'm, I'm, I'm really like surprised. What is that thing? This is the second time I see it. Oh, is it like telling the inclination of the ship regarding the planet, I suppose? Because that looks pretty cool. Beer, no women, no pool parlors, nothing. There's just no sign of civilization at all. No. Oh. Sir, we're being radar scanned. Oh. 20 miles square. That's a lot. Combat stations, blast them in, activate your scopes. Oh, blasters. It's not phasers, it's blasters. I'm sorry if I compare this a lot to Star Trek, but in case you don't know, I'm reacting to the original series in case you don't know my channel, so... Who are you? Morbius of the Bellerophon. Morbius? Yeah, here it is. Morbius E. PhD Lit D. Expedition Philologist. A philologist? Isn't that like language? I of course appreciate your concern, but absolutely no assistance of any sort is required. What? I'm in no sort of difficulty here. Your best procedure will be to turn back at once without landing. But... Uh, why? Set down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. I don't... well... I suppose I'm gonna find out. Permit me to recommend... Something funny down there, Skipper. Captain to crew, stand by to reverse polarity. Stand... Reverse polarity, anyone? Oh, I love that. Oh, look at the landscape again. Man, I'm gonna be drooling every time I see one of these shots. They're so great. I love them. That looks so good. Look at that. Oh. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Check this out. These shots are so carefully crafted. You can see some dust or sand like whirling around with the arrival of the ship, even though it's not really there. So I'm I'm in love with the way that this sh these shots are crafted. They are ingenious and they look amazing. And like I said before, they beat the crap out of Space Invaders and the Flash so far. This is absolutely a treat for me, honestly. Okay, let's continue. Look at the color of that sky. Yeah, but I'll Green. still take blue. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hey, what's this dust coming? Oh. What is it, like something underground? Like on Transformers, this kind of a scorpion? Looked pretty cool, by the way. Is it like a self dra Oh. Oh, is that Roby, the robot? Roby the robot. Oh, and it's a loot. Welcome to Altair Four, gentlemen. Oh, these blue lines, they look so awesome. If you do not speak English, I am at your disposal with 187 other languages along with their various dialects and sub -tongue. If they don't speak English, how are they supposed to understand what you just said? You are a robot, aren't you? That is correct, sir. Oh. Nice climate you have here. High oxygen content. I rarely use it myself, sir. It promotes rust. <laughs> it has a sense of humor. Is it, a, is it a male or female? In my case, sir, the question is totally without meaning. Non-binary. It's kind of weird that they are in the year 22 whatever and they don't know robots. This is kind of weird. Or maybe they don't know robots like him, maybe? I don't know. Please fasten their seat belts. 
So they're gonna go in a convertible over the desert with this guy driving like a madman, like they said. They're gonna be covered in in dust and and, and sand. <laughs> they're gonna be back like like Bridget Jones. <laughs> oh, that's like a little oasis. Two gentlemen will go in. You're expected. Oh well, the guy's already standing there. But of course, you must stay for lunch, gentlemen, and. Uh... Do forgive the ill manners of an old recluse. Okay. Well, he doesn't have any bad blood for what I can see. He's your cook too. He even manufactures the raw materials. Oh, well, that's Not convenient. Enough. One introduces a sample of human food through this aperture. Okay. Now, that's a housewife's dream. <laughs> My dream. Plus absolute selfless obedience. Activate the disposal unit. Okay. Absolute obedience. It's kind of scary, right? Wow, no trash. What? Order cancelled. So it has no self-preservation mechanisms. In the wrong hands, might such a tool become a deadly weapon? Yeah. You see, there happens to be a built-in safety factor. Oh. Can I borrow that formidable-looking sidearm of yours? Point this thing at that Althea Frutex out there on the terrace. How scary is to put an arm on, uh, in a robot's hand? Oh, that looked pretty cool. Point it at the commander. Yeah, what the hell? Aim right between the eyes. What the actual fuck? Oh, it's not gonna shoot. Fire. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I mean... There's something I have to say here. This guy was like first saying he has absolute obedience, but if it has mechanisms to not obey those kind of orders, then there's not exactly absolute obedience, okay? So what's the deal here? And I suppose like those mechanisms are something like, you know, the three rules from Asimov could be, I'm thinking like, it doesn't have any self-preservation uh, mechanisms, which is not exactly within the three rules, but it not harming humans is like, you know, within the basics. Okay. You see, he's helpless. Locked in a sub-electronic dilemma between my direct orders and his basic inhibitions against harming rational beings. Okay. No rational beings. If I were to allow that to continue, he would blow every circuit in his body. Oh, poor guy. Doctor, how did you come by such a mechanism? Tinkered him together during my first months up here. Oh. Coffee is ready, sir. Ooh, coffee, by the way. Doctor, he Nowadays, I have no time for such things. What does he do? You're a philologist, an expert in words and languages, yeah. their origins and meaning. Yet this robot of yours is beyond the combined resources of all Earth's physical science. Uh, yeah, how did he make it? My He's like a genius. Oh, that's cute. These guys are having the worst visit of their lives. Like, point this gun at his head. Let's shut everything down like I'm kidnapping these people. The moment we've interviewed the other members of the Bel Air Farm. Yeah. What about the other? But there are no others, Commander. Before the first what? year was out, they succumbed to a... To a sort of a planetary force here some dark terrible incomprehensible force well like took him away he, what and just how do you account for your immunity dr Martin? Oh. my wife and i differed from the others only in our special love for this new world in our uh, co-workers friend of course skipper there's no record of any wife on the blarifon rules oh, oh. Lieutenant, look under biochemistry julia mars she and i were married by the skipper on the voyage here I have the certificate. I thought Robert okay. managed very charming with feminine touches. I take it Mrs. Morbius isn't at home today. My dear wife died a few months after the others. Oh. Only in her case, it was of natural causes. So he's been alone all this time. Just what were the symptoms of all those other deaths? The symptoms were striking, Commander. My co-workers were torn literally limb from limb. Holy shit, I thought, thought it was a disease. Showed itself. And the Bellarophon? Vaporized as the three remaining survivors tried to take her off. Oh! And yet, in all these 19 years... 
This you guy's immune. You have never again been bothered by this planetary fort. When they said immune, I thought it was oh, a disease. Always in my mind, I seem to feel the creature is lurking somewhere close at hand, and only waiting to be re-invoked for murder. Oh, sh shit. Father. Father. What? Alter. Oh, well. Also, Hold. I this f movie is so filled with information that I, I can't even pause to like try to think over some of the things they just said. So, okay, so far, this guy was left with his daughter and, and well, I assume also his wife. They were immune to this force that kills people, like, like, turning them limb by limb, like he said. And only him and his wife were immune to this force. The wife dies out of whatever, and then he's left alone with his strikingly beautiful daughter, who, by the way, is wearing a very beautiful necklace, from what I can see. Beautiful necklace. So, this guy first said a couple of phrases like, Oh, I'm just a man who likes to be alone in the peacefulness of this place and whatever. And then it's like, no, we're actually being held hostage, my daughter and myself, by this force. Like, what, what is really happening here? Is he really enjoying his life there, knowing that there's something that can just be re-invoked to kill? Are you really having a great life with that kind of a threat outside every day and your child that... I mean, if he got married during the trip, and they've been there for about 20 years, this girl must be about 19, 20 years old, maybe younger. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why would you want to stay there knowing that there's this force that probably can eat your daughter and, and do unspeakable things to her? Like, okay, I'm rambling, but... Commander Adams. Look at them Doctor three, Marshall, like, and, uh, well, hello. And, uh, we so terribly wanted to meet a young man, and now three of them at once. It's very kind of you. You're lovely, Doctor. Uh, Could this end one get you some coffee? Oh, I'm quite able to get it, thank you. This guy didn't lose a single second. He was like, oh. Hands. I hope you'll make allowances too, sir. We young men have been shut up in hyperspace for well over a year. Oh, yeah, sure. He's going to make allowances yeah, on his see. daughter, you uh, dick. Well, there's, uh, there's no rush. Personal space, mate. I suppose one day I shall be obliged to make the trip to Earth with her for the uh, sake of her natural development. She's like 20 years old. You, you're already late for that. Well, that is, I am anyway. Old, dependable Jerry. <laughs> of course, the doc can be trusted, too, in the daytime. That man is notorious throughout seven planetary systems. For doing what? Well, I, I don't feel free to discuss the shortcomings of a fellow officer, but... What is wrong with this guy? Any girl or woman who lets him get her alone, anywhere. What an asshole! And these two are smiling like idiots, and this guy is shit-talking behind them backs. I have you and Robbie and all my friends. <laughs> friends. They're real? Oh! Are those deer? Wait, she has those friends? How? Huh? What is the life expectancy of a deer? She's 19. Are those 19 too? Otherwise, how do they get them? Holy shit, a tiger. Uh, what? Oh, oh man. Is she really in the shot? Outside of the range of my daughter's influence, it's still a deadly wild beast. Oh, it's like a sci-fi jasmine. Man, that's a beautiful shot. I don't think they are together in the same place. I knocked it off, Quinn. <laughs> See, my orders don't quite seem to cover the Bellerophon fatalities. I... Commander. What? Did they give him instructions and they didn't contemplate that there might be dead people? It'd be better if we happen to be carrying about 100 square yards of this stuff. And I'll have Robbie run it off for you and you'll get it not later than tomorrow noon. Look out there, Commander. 
the Bellerophon party. Oh, that's a cemetery. I dug those graves with my own hands. Oh. I have believed no wish to repeat that experience. I mean, Morbius seemed to be a very honest guy, but I think he's not showing everything right now. And I don't blame him. Thank you very much, Doctor. This guy, I already hate him. Okay, I hate people who shit talks behind people's back. Sometimes the sounds are way louder than the voices. This girl is so happy. Man, even the night landscape looks cool. Handle it gently, it has to get us home. Oh. Is that like an electromagnet? I'm right over there. Aye, aye, oh, sir. look at this guy carrying lead with one arm. Oh my goodness, look at that blouse. The whole thing hardly comes to ten tons. Oh, wow. With one oh, arm. Hi. Does your father know you're out here? This guy is Did like... To go near this I'm surprised he's not pissing the car tires. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Over here. Okay. What is he doing with Roby? I could get a hold of some of the real stuff. Real stuff? Booze? <laughs> okay. I am analyzing. <laughs> Would 60 gallons be sufficient? <laughs> this guy's gonna die! <laughs> You're the most understanding soul I ever met up with. Ow! Nothing really personal. Just a kiss. Why should people want to kiss you? This guy. Really oh, I thought it was a blouse. It's a dress. Good for you, though. It, it stimulates the whole system. As a matter of fact, you can't be a only too happy to show you. This guy is taking advantage on a girl. I'm, I'm, uh. Is that all there is to it? Well, you, you've sort of got to stick with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, this is funny. She doesn't get it, like. I don't know, Lieutenant, there must be something seriously the matter with me, because honestly, I haven't noticed the least bit of stimulation. <laughs> Let's do this thing right. And I know there are a lot of pressing duties. He knew you were just taking ship. advantage of somebody's and ignorance. Yeah. Depend on it, Lieutenant, that those privileges won't be stretched to taking your kind of advantages. Exactly. Exactly. Well said, Leslie. Well, look at yourself. See, you can't run around. So for Pete's sake, go home and put on something. Anything. Why? But what's wrong with her clothes? Lieutenant and I were just trying to get a little healthy stimulation from hugging and kissing, that's all. Oh, that's all. It's so easy for you, isn't it? There's no uh, feelings, no emotions. You. Uh... What is wrong with this guy? It that I'm in command of 18 competitively selected super perfect physical specimens with an average age of 24.6 who have been locked up in hyperspace for 300 days. Who gives it? Days. They can't control themselves if they are so perfect? I'm sorry. I don't like him. I just don't like him. Oh, is he going to be the romantic interest? Well, I dare say you won't have to. I think the best thing you can do is to go to bed. I still have some work to do in my study. Good night, my dear. That's a very fancy way to say, I don't give a shit, I got more important stuff to do. Is that how you call Robbie? Okay, yeah. Where have you been? I've beamed and beamed. Just Sorry, three times. I, I must have a new dress right away. Oh, and it does the dresses. Radiation proof. No, just eye proof will do. I proof, okay. With lots and lots of star sapphires. Star sapphires? Would diamond or emeralds do? Well, if they're large enough. Five, ten, and fifteen carats and on hand. Okay. This is a dream robot. I also will be hugging him. What is that? Is that the, 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 the force thing? Oh, is it opening? What's happening? And those robotic arms make absolutely no noise. And valuable government property was sabotaged. 
Now, the two of you claim to have been at your posts and awake. But they didn't see anything. But it didn't kill anyone. So it's not this force, right? Pending further evidence, you're deprived of space pay and all privileges. Well, me too, sir? No, me too, sir. We'll stand 20 extra watches. I'll have less dreaming aboard this ship. He's tough. You are. I'm leaving you in command here. Oh, I see. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, because he's not going to see the girl anymore. Oh, and he still gets an attitude at it. What an absolute jerk. Man, the lack of music really makes this thing... Oh, look, a little monkey! Yeah, the lack of music makes this thing feel a lot different than many other movies. Oh, Robbie, you're a dick. She naked? I suppose, look at him, he's running! Looks like... Uh, Alan, oh no, you she's wearing Alan, a... Alan. Uh, you know, I sure didn't expect to see you today after the way you spoke to me yesterday. Yeah. I'm, uh... Oh, look right. at that! Through, that's it. Honey, why are you asking for his approval? Oh, I thought you weren't expecting me today. Oh, look at him. You always look just beautiful. So he is going to be the romantic interest. What's wrong with theory? Oh, she's hitting on him. All right. And he's going for it. Oh, well... Now she felt stimulated. Go figure. Now there's some stimulation with Mr. Nielsen here. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. He's my friend. Um, doesn't look like he's friendly. Oh. Oh, wow. That looked awesome. That was... Her Sorry, friend. Didn't recognize me. Is it the f force thing? What's happening? What just happened here? Wait a minute, Skipper. After all, it is his house. It is his house. He just made out with his daughter. But it doesn't look like Egyptian. Look like a code. Chinese. Oh. You'll find the household silver in the dining room and my daughter's jewelry on her dressing table. Come on. Sit down. Oh, he has the gift of command. This planet was the home of a mighty and noble race of beings. Okay. Which called themselves the Krell. Ethically, as well as technologically, they were a million years ahead of humankind. For in unlocking the mystery... Long before the dawn of man's history, they had walked our Earth and brought back many biological specimens. I see. That explains the tiger and the deer. Oh, okay. This all but divine race perished in a single night. Well, like a meteor meteorite? Even their cloud-piercing towers of, of glass and porcelain and adamantine steel have crumbled back into the soil of Altair IV, and nothing, absolutely nothing, remains above ground. So, was it like a meteorite? No record of their physical nature has survived. Except perhaps in the form of this uh, characteristic arch. I suggest you consider it in comparison to one of our functionally designed human doorways. So these are their ruins. Try your blaster there, Commander. It's not doing anything. Is it like a combination thing? Oh yeah, it was. Oh. Much of the equipment is familiar. It's still Designed working? On this screen may be projected the total scientific knowledge of the Krell from its primitive beginning to the day of its annihilation. Oh. Boxes, is it like in the time machine with the spinning rings? Ago, I so eventually I was able to deduce most of their huge oh. logical alphabet. Oh, so that's what they found, like the writing? This makes a lot of sense because Dr. Morbius is a philologist. So he's an expert in languages and all that. So for him, it was easy to decipher the Krell's language. And 
ever since he got that, now he's been deciphering their knowledge. So, yeah, but it's still kind of funny that these people, like in the 22 whatever AD, Earth people don't know robots. This is like, uh, okay, different time of history, I guess. Okay. Over here, you see the wow. electromagnetic waves of my brain. A seven year old child was normally expected to send that all the way to the top. Which by Krauss wow. classifies me as a low grade moron. Yet I have an officially recorded IQ of 183. 183? Oh, he's like really there. focusing. He's yeah. like a human figure. Oh, wow. Because my daughter is alive in my brain from microsecond to microsecond. Right. While I'm so this is all his there. mind doing that image. Something so I see where Star Wars got that idea from. It's all right, sir. A commanding officer doesn't need brains. Just a good loud voice. That is so rude. In my first attempt at creating an image here, afterwards I lay unconscious for a day and a night. Oh, wow. The shock had permanently, permanently doubled my intellectual capacity. Otherwise, my researches here would have come to nothing. The Krell had been applying their entire racial energies to a new project. Somehow free them once and for all from any dependence on physical instrumentality. Wow. Everything here is new. Not a sign of age yeah. or wear on any of it. These devices, self-service, self-maintained, have stood exactly as you see them for 2,000 centuries. Wow. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 Oh, wow, so it's exponential. Wow. The number 10 raised almost literally to the power of infinity. Endless energy. Oh, man, this photograph is absolutely beautiful. There, look, there they are. I thought, okay, so this is like a huge place. How could they hide this huge place in the planet? Like, I, I assume this is all underground because they couldn't see it from the surface. 20 miles, 20 miles. Oh, that was the radius, 20 miles, right? Where they got radioed? This is one of their ventilator shafts. You can feel the warm air rising. Oh, so the, the energy is working from the underground? It's like always working? And 400 other shafts, like this one. There are 400 shafts with that many levels and they couldn't see them from the surface? With all that energy working? That photo is fucking awesome. Oh no, they set a perimeter? Right away, sir. Like an invisible fence? Okay. Chow, I, I request the lieutenant's permission to take a little walk outside the perimeter, sir. There's nothing out there. But there is, sir. He has to go pick up an, an order, actually. <laughs> Kill the power on the fence. Oh man, I don't like it that this guy goes out and now they have no power on the fence. They're gonna get hacked again. And all because this guy wanted booze. <laughs> That's a full shipment. Man, the guy even got the stickers. <laughs> You're small too. Uh, uh, uh. This guy. Is he gonna be carrying the bottles like that? Can he just get a little trolley? Whoa! Whoa! What the hell just happened? Shall I shut down a current, sir? No! Something was trying to invade. Holy shit, it's... Wow! Oh man, that looks pretty cool. I love how it leaves the prints, but there's no movement, like rocks trembling or something, so it's not really heavy. Oh! But why is it not flying like last time? Now it's actually walking because of the fence? Oh shh! Oh my god, somebody got torn! Perhaps I do not choose to be dictated to in my own world. 
I don't think that's your world, buddy. Conclusion that man is unfit as yet to receive such knowledge, such almost limitless power. Whereas Morbius, with his artificially expanded intellect, is now ideally suited to administer this power exactly. for the whole... Exactly. How is it done? Skipper, his body is plastered all over the communications room. Oh, man. He got torn apart. Let's start it again. Yeah, this guy already got worried, seriously. I'm trying to make a plastic model from the footprints we found. Okay. It's a claw. The claw. Characteristic of a four-footed animal. Okay. Our visitor last night left the tracks of a biped. So it could it be like a bear that can be both on four and on twos? I gave him permission to go out last night. Did you give him permission to get falling down drunk? Of course, Of a hundred and twenty proof bourbon without a trace of hangover on it. Now that ain't natural, sir. That's a beautiful type of drink, no hangover. All right, dismissed. No punishment? Nothing? No disciplinary action? Maybe you and I ought to drop over to that Krell laboratory and get our IQs boosted a couple of hundred percent. Sir, burial detail is ready. Yeah, sure. I mean, if I had the chance to increase my IQ that much, I would take it. Definitely. I would probably become a very unhappy person, though. Oh. Oh, the three of them. The next attack on your party will be more deadly and general. How do you know that? Because he was a survivor! He just oh. told you all that. Call it a, a premonition. You don't have to be so cryptic. I mean, you've already seen it happen. It's not a premonition. You're just looking at the signs and the same symptoms. What so what are they shooting at again? I'm sorry if I've leaned on you at all. You've got to understand that. Stop right. knocking yourself out, Skipper. She picked the right man. That doesn't stop you from being an ass. Hello. Pick as a house, sir, and we were dead on target with both first. It's coming on again. Oh shit. Again? Oh my god, it's a monster! Look at that, it's like a tiger. Wow, that looks fucking awesome. Wow. No 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 Get away from there, you dummy! It's like a gorilla? No, Jerry, don't, what are you, what, what are you doing? Oh my God. Oh man, this is, this is like honestly good. Oh man, this guy is, is crying. The, the energy must be like going crazy. She screamed and this guy left. Kinky helpless as long as he remains here so willfully. Then why do you stay there? I mean, I know that it's not a threat for them, but still, why would you stay? Man, three dead crewmen, that's horrible. Hypnotic illusions don't tear people apart. Exactly. You left out two very important words, where feasible. Now, if you remember the Bellerophon expedition. They the vaporized. vaporized trying yeah. Trying to lift that guilt-edged priority that one of us gets into that Krell lab and takes that brain boost. So the father knows how to get out of there if he already got that brain boost, but he doesn't want to share? Oh, he shot no these things. Oh. My beams are focused on your blasters, gentlemen. Who are you trying to fool? Emergency cancellation Archimedes. Oh, it's got a save word. Okay. I don't know. It was just some kind of big outline in the disintegrator beams. You should have seen it. It looked awesome, girl. But I can't possibly leave him alone. I just can't. Then we'll take him. Yeah. I can't agree to that either. Can't you? You don't realize what. Doc? What happened to him? You ought to see my new mind. He made it? The Krell had completed the project. Okay. No instrumentalities. True creation. Something similar to what the robot can do? Monsters from the id. The id. id? What's that? Is he gonna pass out for a day and a half? Uh, dark. Or did he die? He died? You wanted me to make a choice. Now you've chosen for me. 
What is he yet? Did, 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 did. Elementary basis of the subconscious mind. The... Monsters from the id. Uh. Holy! Uh. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so... Wait. These people achieved the life without instrumentalities, right? That's, that's what they were trying to do. So they were self-creating stuff. So I imagine that's pretty much the technology that Robbie does. Like you, he can analyze and then he can create the elements and do stuff, right? So I suppose this is something similar to what they were doing. But then they started creating monsters from the subconscious of, his, of their mind which is horrible because they had already overcome all the evils in society like crime and hunger and injustices and all that and suddenly deep down in their minds they still have these monsters that they materialized i mean if this is the thing which i'm pretty sure it is it's awesome I mean, the story took for ever to get to this point, but this is really cool. I mean, this is this is really good, really, really good. Okay. Operated by the electromagnetic impulses of individual Krell brains. They could hardly have understood what power was destroying them. Their own subconscious destroyed them. Something is approaching from the southwest. Oh shit. <laughs> Why don't you just shut the blinders or this 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 things? Yeah, dude, it took forever. I feel sorry for you, young man. I feel sorry for your daughter, Morbius. Exactly, asshole. <laughs> Morbius, that thing out there. It's you, exactly. You're cr Oh man, dude, you're gonna kill yourself. Don't let it in. Kill it, Rob. Knock him out. It's no use. Exactly. He can't kill it because it's you. Oh, look at that. The set was actually made with concrete. That's a lot of work. We're all part monsters in our subconscious. So we have laws and religion. Let me go. Love the statement, though. Consciously, it still lacked the power to operate the great machine. But your subconscious had been made stronger. I exactly. Won't. When your comrades voted to return to Earth, you sent your secret id out to murder them. Of course! You thought we were threatening your little egomaniac empire. Your subconscious sent its id monster out again. More deaths, Morbius. Yeah. Harm my own daughter. But now she's defying you, Morbius. Yeah. Even in you. So now you're whistling up your monster again to punish her for her disloyalty. This is so awful! Your indestructible oh, door? Metal, 26 inches thick. Who gives a sh your monster stronger. Look. You are so doomed. You have to shoot him in the head. Why are you letting it take so long? Say you don't believe this, okay? Tell me you don't. He doesn't pass through the denial phase. Come on. Oh, I thought he was. Oh my God, he's getting white hot. And I have no power to stop it. You could shoot yourself. Oh man. Oh my God. You can create anything with your mind. If he kills it, if the monster kills him, it kills itself. They are both victims of each other. Father. Oh, I overthought that one. Yeah, I overinterpreted it, sorry. The switch, throw it. Can you just tell them beforehand what does that switch do? In 24 hours, it must be. Miles. Couldn't you have told him before he hit the switch? Okay, they left. What an astrogator. Okay, they got they Ruby the with them. Aye, aye, skipper. Well, they lost five men, but at least they got a robot that will do the work of 20. And he doesn't need food. And he can make booze. <laughs> Your father, my shipmates, all the stored knowledge of the crowd. Gone. Five seconds. Four, oh no! Three, two, one. Wow. Yeah, that's 
it's horrible. It's beautiful, but horrible. Your father's name will shine again. Like a beacon in the galaxy. I'm I'm so surprised about this movie. At the beginning I really wasn't sure about where this movie was going to. Something that happened to me when, when they were in the Krell lab, I realized that this movie has spent a lot of time explaining us different types of technology. And the scenes were, you know, back in the 50s and in the 60s, this is something that is normal. Scenes tend to be longer, like shots used to be longer. Like, you know, in the 70s, the movies will take forever for like, you know, a person will reach in a place in the car and then we will see those people coming out of the car and talk a little and then go inside the restaurant. And it was one single take that will last about 25 seconds. I get those right now. 25 seconds for one shot is too much, especially if you are editing action in a Jason Bourne movie type of uh, filming. Anyway, but in this case, I understand that many of the shots were long, but I mean, what you are watching is amazing. It's it's not boring for me sometimes when the scenes are very long when they were in this kind they look like the teletransporter things but they were to resist the 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 shift of velocity um it was a very long transition and what they are doing is that they are showing off and this is something i am not against sorry i had to take my glasses off this is something i am not against because the shots are beautiful, the colors are awesome, and I don't know if I'm watching a remastered version or something, but it looks crisp, it looks so good, it, it holds so well for today's standards, or what will be my today's standards, this movie holds so great, so awesome. Um, like I said at the beginning, I love the color combination. I loved many of the matte paintings because even though they don't look like today's type of FX, it looks so good and it doesn't distract me from what the story is. I mean, I do get distracted because everything is so awesome. But if you want to be distracted by something, it better be because this is something so well done and not because it's shite, okay? So I really enjoy watching such a beautiful, every, like you, you could see probably every single space shot there's out there. I am amazed. Now about the sets, I love the inside of the ship. It's kind of a monotone theme, but this is something that was very common back in the day. Um, there were just a couple of hints of gray and red, very military, very futuristic in the very lean, very slick, very clean, very uh, sober type of design from, uh, fr from this era. I think one of the things that I wasn't really that, uh, well, I mean, I'm, like I said before, I'm comparing a lot of this movie with uh, Star Trek, considering that Star Trek right now it's my referent for you know the classic sci-fi so i see a lot of you know the jargon even though it's a spaceship they still speak as if they were in a ship like ai -I and all that um i saw a lot of science jargon in this movie like all the orders and all the instruments that they use inside of the ship i would say that there are a couple of weak points in the script like oh we didn't expect to be casualties from the other ship so i don't know what to do i didn't have instructions for this what like really you wouldn't have instructions for something like that like this is not a case scenario they would have th thought beforehand really now about the plot the plot is extremely short for a two-hour movie okay 
Now, something I already told you is that some of the scenes here are mostly explanations on technology. Like, we took some time explaining Robbie and how he can take food and analyze it and then recreate it by doing from the raw materials all the way to the finished product. We also got all the science explaining uh, the lab, okay? So we got this explanation about how their mind works. We got all this display of how the mind can lift this weight from the ceiling and we got the explanation of how they enhance their minds and how our minds are so much inferior compared to the Krell's mind. And then we also got the explanation about how they get this infinite energy that is actually potentially accumulated through this huge area that somehow was hidden inside a mountain or I don't know where, but they got thousands, not thousands, but I think what, hundreds of shafts where all of this energy is stored. It's a lot of explanations, a lot of explanations. We got a lot of demonstrations, like this protection things, like the walls that start appearing outside of the house. And those explanations, little by little, started building all the knowledge that we got together about the Krell so that we can understand now what is Morbius doing, which is creating monsters from the deep of his subconscious, just like the Krells did. I really wasn't expecting so many cool visuals like the ones that I just saw, like the monster, this outline of red energy, like first purple and then it was red and then it started to get even more aggressive and it started to get a lot more power and then started killing people. I had no idea any of this happened. I had never seen any sc screenshots or anything about this movie and they looked so good so good they looked even better than this shark that eats uh, Samuel L. Jackson in this really crappy movie I can understand that this was a very expensive movie because of the sets that had to be made and uh, in all honesty a lot of the sets are just stunning like inside of the ship I loved it outside of the ship where they are in the desert loved it Inside of their house, not so much. I'm going to say I really didn't like that kind of decoration. I was not a fan. But the study was beautiful. And then the lab was also beautiful. But the place that I was even more impressed was uh, where they were in these shafts where the electricity is produced. This it are beautiful architectonical designs that I suppose they were miniatures for this movie, but they, I mean, all this geometrical design, it's so much about that era and I love it. Okay, so I'm reading some info about the movie. Um, and I just, I was reading something about the Walt Disney Studios and I remember I read that from the beginning of the movie and like, yes, obviously all of the additions of the cartoons that happen, like, you know, the rays, this kind of smoke, uh, the monster, obviously at the fence, all the rays probably are from the Walt Disney Studios and they already had this technology to superimpose images one behind the other or one in front of the other uh, to create different layers on top of a main film. So yeah, this this is genius because I mean this is this is another planet so it doesn't have to look like realistic. You know, it's, it's out of this world, like the poster said. Yeah, it says one of the wires that really picks him up is really visible. Yeah, I could see some of the wires from the tractor, from this electromagnet that carries in the back. So yeah, I could see the wires in a couple of shots. Or probably was one or two shots, anyway. One of the things that I also wanted to mention is how different this movie feels because it has absolutely no music. And this is something that I really picked up and I was kind of expecting this because from the get-go, from the beginning of the movie, we saw like electro... Oh shit, what was the name? 
electronic tonalities. And I'm seeing here in this IMDb website, and it says music department, Bebe Baron and Louis Baron. I don't know if I say, if I'm cor correctly pronouncing Bebe or Bebe, I don't know. Um, so those electronic tonalities were the things used instead of music. The thing that I didn't like about this tonalities was that sometimes the, the sound was too high and the voice of the actors was a little bit low. So this is probably one of the things that I didn't enjoy, but it gives it a completely different feeling. It doesn't have the ordinary music like, oh, I'm in the house with the father and the daughter, so I have to make this uplifting music. No, this was all about the sounds. Which give, in my opinion, it gives it a very foreign feeling. I don't know. You don't feel at home because you're always having this weird sound surrounding the, the main characters. So you really never feel at home when you are in this in this movie okay so i see also that this film was based on william shakespeare the tempest i think it says here that it was the this is the first mainstream film to have music performed entirely by electronic instruments so yeah this is a very important feature Filmed on the same stage as The Wizard of Oz from 1939, 17 years earlier, the set of Altira's Garden is a reuse of the Munchkin Village set. <laughs> the reaction from the preview audiences was so positive that the movie was released as it was, with no further changes. This is why there are several rapid takes toward the end. Oh, this is Leslie Nielsen's film debut! What? Did he make uh, television before? Because he's very good looking in this film. It says here that the model of the flying saucer style Earth space cruiser was retained by MGM prop department and subsequently used in a number of production of the MGM lot, including To Serve Man, which I've already seen. Uh, and Roby the robot, his ground transporter and crew uniforms would be later used on uh, the, the Twilight Zone as well. I don't know which episodes though. Obviously I thought I was gonna find something about Star Trek uh, connected here and says uh, Gene Roddenberry has been quoted as saying that this film was a major inspiration for that series. This is so obvious and so visible, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to see where the inspiration came from. I would suppose also that Star Wars, you know, the image of Princess Leia in this hologram was also taken from this with Altira's image, uh, I suppose. Loosely based on The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Okay. Roby the Robot was originally operated by stuntman actor Frankie Darrow. And actually, I was watching this on Amazon Prime. And you can see his name listed uh, when you pause the movie. And it says, He was fired during filming after almost falling over while inside the expensive prop following a five martini lunch. <laughs> okay. The mini dress worn by Anne Francis was seen to be the first worn in a Hollywood movie and resulted in the film being banned in Spain. It was not shown there until 1967. Due to General Franco's dictatorship that considered it dirty and obscene that a woman wore a mini dress to show off legs. Production took up 89,000 square feet of soundstage space. Wow. So Spaceship C-57D, where these guys arrive, appeared in seven episodes of The Twilight Zone. Third from the Sun, haven't seen that. The monsters are due on Maple Street. I did see it. It appears at the end of the episode. The Invaders, which also appears at the end of the episode. To Serve Man, that appears at the beginning and at the... Oh, right, when they're loading the people up. Oh, okay. Hocus Pocus and Frisbee, I haven't seen it. Death Ship, I haven't seen it. On Thursday, we leave for home. Okay. In case you don't watch my channel, I react to both uh, The Twilight Zone from the 60s 
and uh, Star Trek. Bellerophon is a hero from Greek mythology. His greatest feat was the destruction of the Chimera, a monster who breathed fire. And actually, I just watched, rewatched uh, Mission Impossible 2, and it's about Bellerophon and Chimera. You know, the two poisons and, and all of this. Crappy movie, by the way. Oh, look at this. Anne Francis was never on set at the same time as the tiger, I told you. If you look carefully, at 27.04 minutes into the film, you can see the vertical dividing the line were two separate shots. Yeah. I, for some reason, I could see the division, and I can no longer see the movie because my my rent time just expired, so I cannot rewatch it. Okay, so... I, I read a lot of facts here that I'm not going to list them all, but I took about an hour reading everything. Uh, I see that this was also Roby the Robot's debut, uh, just like Leslie Nielsen's film debuted. Anyway, um, I really liked how this movie is, 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 is so important right now and how what we will now consider classic is still based on this ultra classic of sci-fi. I, I am so happy that I have finally watched this movie. I am really, um, I feel satisfied knowing that this is one of those must watch and that I finally got to watch it and that I got the chance to share it with you guys because like I said, um, as for this channel and as for classic uh, movies and for what I like to watch, this was such a treat visually speaking the story like i said might have been slow but it was a good story in the end it would have been horrible if this was a slow story and a bad one also but no the story is actually very good it brings us a terrible dilemma at the end um i don't know there are not really that many negative things that i can point out of this movie everything is is like I said, visually stunning. You know, some of the things that you probably saw that I was not really that happy to watch was how Jerry was taking advantage of uh, Alta's naivete. Um, I really didn't like that at all. And now, uh, you know, I mean, this is a movie and in a matter of just a few hours of communication, you know, with just a couple of hours of being together, they already love each other, right? I mean, and I also kind of like was kind of like, okay, what? How the father, how Morbius was just taking everything so lightly. Like, oh yeah, this guy's making out with my daughter. It's okay. I don't care. So yeah, this was like, I didn't get that. Like, why didn't they stress any of this enough? Like, this is his only daughter, the only survivor that he has with, like not taking this seriously. Um, but in the end... You forget about all that, you know, because the movie continues and the explanations continue and you have to keep up with every single explanation here. I don't regret any of those minutes, actually. Um, anyway, I don't think I have anything else to say about how good this movie was. I am so happy to have watched it. Thank you, everybody, that suggested this movie. I really enjoyed it. And so I think next movie is going to be a modern movie. It's going to be Top Gun Maverick. I, I already watched the first Top Gun movie from 1986. If you want to go watch the reaction to that movie, you can watch it on this. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining me in this amazing journey. I will see you in the next one. God bless and bye-bye.